everybody awake out there this morning? Good, good, good. I'm trying to get organized. I'm a little, a little behind the game here, but it's good to see everybody out this morning. Mount Lell, let's do this. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. So glad you're part of our service and those that are watching via Facebook and live streaming and all that good stuff. Good to see everybody. Well, I was going to read scripture, but my thing's not working. Good deal. Good deal. A few little quick announcements and we'll get into our service this morning. Uh, don't forget, next Saturday, I believe it is, the 29th is the Princess's Tea. I didn't say it right, did it? God's Amazing Girls Princess Tea Party. Uh, they'll be meeting at the carriage house from 12 to 2. I think they're doing hair and makeup and all that good stuff. And then from 2 to 2 to something. Uh, <laughs> two to nine, I believe it is, or, do, or two to seven, two to eight, somewhere in there, they're having a, a little tea party. So it's for all women, all girls, all young ladies. It's kind of a, a thing uh, that God's amazing girls do. But if you got any questions, see my wife. She's the one that probably scans you when you come in today, checking your temperature and all that good stuff. Remember that. Uh, just got a note here. Uh, if you're interested in any CDs or DVDs for camp meeting, uh, they're on sale right now. They've got them. Uh, CDs are $3 of each, so if you just want one particular service, DVDs are $5 each. Or you can get a complete set of CDs for $15. That's all seven services from Sunday morning all the way to Friday night. And the DVD uh, complete set is $25. If you're interested, see Sister Melissa Youngblood. She will hook you up with those. Amen. Amen. I was trying to think if we had anything. Sheriff, where you at? Where's he at? He's gone. He told me to heat him up, and he disappeared. Well, he's, he missed it. He's going to miss it. He's probably out in the foyer. He's probably collecting KJ somewhere. <laughs> so, so, but it's all good. But it is good to see everybody out. Hey, if you're a visitor here and you didn't receive your free gift this morning that the Welcome Center, the ladies, our fit team will, will help, you up, help you out there with that. Uh, and if you got any questions, you see them, they can help you if you're looking for classrooms or know more about what's going on in our services. Also, you can go on our website and see things and Facebook and, and, and all that. Uh, also, real quick, don't forget, if you ain't on the Church Center app, it, it would help you to be on that. Uh, you, can, you can hit Church Center app and go to uh, the thing, and it tells you to pick your church, am I right? Mount Vale, or you can, if you got a bulletin today, that little QR, I got it right this morning. The QR thing, my jigger is, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm 54, I got wiser, Buffy. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see, she, but now I know when her birthday is. Somebody told. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hobby Lobby gift card. They're closing Hobby Lobby. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. But uh, just remember those things. And, and, and uh, But get on that church center app. You can go to the QR and scan that and all that. If you will, let's stand. Uh, I was going to try to pull up a scripture to read, but my phone would not operate properly. And I guess that's why you're supposed to sometimes carry the paperback version. How many has got the paperback version of the Bible? Amen. I got a few at the house, but I, I've got lazy and carry these things because they're so easy to find things, I guess, is, is, the, is the hand point of it or the good point of it. But anyway... Let's do this. We know a scripture, amen. Everybody knows this scripture. They hold the signs at football games and baseball games. I want you to quote it with me this morning. John 3, 16, amen. Quote it with me. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, y'all touch your neighbor and say, that's me. Whosoever shall believeth on him shall not perish. This next part's real good. But have everlasting life. If you've been born again, you ought to give him a little praise this morning. Amen? Everlasting life. It don't ever end. Woo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Invite God into the service and let's worship our Lord this morning. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings, God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your long-suffering, God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your love, God. 
that you sent your only son here to die that we might have eternal life, God. And through you, Lord, through you and you alone, God, can we have that life, Lord. And Lord, we ask you, God, right now to inhabit the praises of your people, Father God. Anoint our singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastor as he brings forth the word, God. And we ask you, God, anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work in this place today, God. God, we ask you, God, to have your will and your way in here. Do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles in this place, God. And we ask it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said. he's ready amen if you ain't ready today's your day amen today is your day to get ready Woo. anyhow get our tithe, just get ready to receive our tithes and offering today uh, just for a quick reminder if you're new uh, we are, have two people up front with plates and we'll have two in the back and uh, so if you want to don't want to come all the way up here there'll be people back there and if you don't feel comfortable getting out of your seat just raise your hand and the, the fit team will serve you also, there's a lot of ways to give. You've got text to give. You don't even have to get out of your seat. You can give online. You can go back. There's a kiosk back in the corner. There's already people back there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, but anyway, they're back there doing that. Sheriff, how many you got, buddy? He got, he's only got 13, so somebody help him out this morning. Amen. Amen. If you got your tithes and got your offerings this morning. You know, when it comes to giving... It's easy to give to things that you really care about. Amen? Grandparents, how many grandparents we got in here? Now, when that little grandchild asked for that little Coca-Cola, you probably would not have bought your own children when they were little. How many give it to them? Come on now. It's all right. It's easy to give to what you care about. And I just want to just throw this at you a little bit because sometimes... Do we really care as much about God as we say we do when we hold on everything we got? How, how, many, how, how many agree if it was not for him, you'd be in a bad place right now? Come on. How many understand if it wasn't for him, you'd never make it out of this world alive? Amen? The, old, the scripture says this, where your treasure is, there will be your heart. I tell you right now, I could take your I could take your online account and tell where your treasure's at and where your heart's at. 
and, and you can do mine the same way. Some of us, like Charlie and Matt, a few of us, are, are, sometimes there's a boat involved somewhere. Come on, we understand that. There's a gun involved somewhere. There's, there's a motorcycle involved somewhere. Amen. And for you women folk, there's some shoes involved somewhere. And dresses, whatever you like. I don't know. What does women like? What do y'all do? Hobby Lobby. Buffy likes Hobby. Hobby Lobby. You can probably see Buffy's account is Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> She's probably just puts HB now and they know what it means. But the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes we will give to what we really care about. So this morning, I challenge you to give to God because I know you care about Him or you would not be here this morning. Amen. You have a love for God. So in turn, if we'll give what we really care about, we'll know where our heart is. And, that's, and giving all comes from the heart. We think it comes from our wallet, but it don't. It really comes from my heart. It comes from my heart. It don't come from my wallet because I understand this. I can give to God. I could give everything I got in my wallet, and He's faithful enough to give it back. And then some. Come on now. I know it's a little hard this morning, but I want you to understand that because sometimes we get a mindset, we hold on to it because we're afraid we can't get it back. But the thing about it is, if God is all-powerful and owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the earth and the fullness thereof is his, we ain't got no worry about when we give. Let me do this. I'm, I, I don't, you, don't, you don't have to raise your hand if you want to, but how many is given and God never fulfilled his promises to you? Raise your hand. Y'all look around because ain't a hand went up. Come on. So I'm going to do this. How many is given and God said he, he did what he said he would do for you? Come on. Come on now. So I challenge you this morning. If you haven't been given, you need to start giving. And I'm going to challenge you again because I really feel this in my spirit. If you've been given, you ought to set you a certain amount to give a little extra. If you give your 10%, give 10 extra dollars, 20 extra I'll even challenge you, you could give 20%, and I bet God will take care of everything else. Come on. It's up to you now. It's up between you and God. We don't need to know. I don't ask, and pastor don't ask, and, and, and we don't know. But the fact of the matter is, I challenge you this morning. If you are faithful, if you're not faithful, start being faithful. And if you are faithful, then give a little extra and see if God won't do what he's. If we can't outgive him, then we can't outgive him. I'll say this, and I'll hush. I know I seem like I'm rambling, but why don't you get this this morning? There was one of the guys who was real famous. Now, his name just left me, but he, he built heavy equipment back in the 30s and 40s. It was a Christian man. And by the end of his life, he was giving 80% of his income to the work of the Lord and lived off 20%. And you know what? He was a multimillionaire, if not a billionaire to today's standards. So if that'll work for him, he said, well, I ain't got that kind of money. It don't matter what kind of money you got. If that'll work for him, it'll work. Amen. How many believe that this morning? Amen. Amen. All right. It's enough teaching on that. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for the men and women who are so faithful to this house, God, and so faithful to the work of your kingdom, God, and so faithful in their giving and tithing, Father Lord. And God, we ask you to continue to move in their hearts, God, begin to, to move in a mighty and powerful way, God. We're at a season now in this world, God, that you could come back at any moment, God. And God, we're at a season in time, an urgency, if you will, of the hour to reach the lost and to reach those who are bound and, and, and hooked up and hung up on everything, God. And God, we know it takes resources to make these things happen, Father Lord. And we're asking you, God, to begin to move upon your people, God. As they give, God, if they, if they haven't started giving and they're giving, you bless them like never before. And if they're giving and they increase their giving, God, you do what your word says and open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on them they cannot contain, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask right now, God, you take these tithes, take these offerings, multiply for the use of your kingdom today, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver today, God. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
open your mouth and say yes. Yes, he's been good to you. Come on now, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh yes, we praise your name, Lord. We give you glory and honor this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all honor. Amen. Amen. Y'all are a little quiet this morning. Or maybe it's just me. The pastor's alive this morning. What did you say Wednesday? Call 911? Yeah, yeah. We're going to call 911 again. There's more dead people here this
sing this now. Come on now. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. Sing it again. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. Worthy of 
Come on, somebody. Let's bless him this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give God the best hand clap we've given him this morning. Amen. The whole premise of why we're here this morning is the fact that Jesus overcame. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he's not in the tomb anymore. We were just privileged enough to get to be there this year before COVID shut everything down. And I got to go in for the second time to look around in there. I didn't see him anywhere. Amen. He is very much alive and well. Amen. And he has dual places. He's at the right hand of the Father, and he lives on the inside of me. Somebody say, explain it. I can't explain it, but I know he does. If you believe that's right, give God a good hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Reach down, pick up your Bibles. Amen. iPads, cell phones, whatever device you have the Bible on. Amen. I like the old uh, traditional, as our assistant pastor said, I like the paperback version. The battery never goes dead on that one. Amen. Had one for years. The battery, man, it's a lifetime guarantee on the battery on it. It never goes dead. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43. I'd like to preach to you today on a little thought. This will be the third in the series. I got it started and we got in the parking lot. But this is be my third message out of uh, Isaiah 43. I am a survivor. Amen. You know something? If you're going to make it in this old world, you're going to have to make your mind up. I'm going to make it. Amen. If you give up and quit, guess what? You're not going to make it. I want you to make it. Isaiah 43 and 2. If you're there, say amen. Let's make our guests and visitors real warm welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. Amen. Wow. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come down there and sit right beside you. Preach right on your lap and give you the COVID if you don't liven up a little bit this morning. Amen. Raise your hand if you want the COVID this morning. Nobody? I don't have it, but I'll find somebody and bring them with me if you don't straighten up and help me a little bit. This is not a funeral home. I understand the fact that Christ died. Amen. I know that. It was a sad day, man, when he hung his, when he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost. It was horrible, but he did it for you. You ought to be excited about that. Amen. He paid sin's penalty so you wouldn't have to. Amen. And it'd still be a sad story, but I want you to understand they have done everything they could to sing you into another world to make you understand that he overcame. Amen. Amen. That the joy of the Lord should be your strength. Amen. Hey, before we do that, uh, have you got those pictures up there? You got them? Hey, let's look at these pictures. As many of you remember, we were raising money back, uh, I mean, a couple months back or so, and it's been a fight to the absolute finish. But I want you to public pick there with your help and the help of ministries all over uh, the state of Tennessee, the international state office, everybody pitched in. And yesterday, Brother Larry Frazier got his van. Can we give God a good praise for that? If you ain't excited, I bet that little fellow's excited over at White Pine, Tennessee today. Amen. Show me the picture up, my brother. This was a 2015. It's behind me. Oh, look at that. Well, why didn't you put it on mine? I want to see it too. <laughs> amen. That's a 2015, amen. And that van had 2,100 miles on it when we bought it. They had paperwork on that van. Show them some more pictures, guys. They had paperwork on that van. They gave $53,000 for that van. And we got that van for $18,000 with 2,100 miles. Isn't that awesome? That's just how God works. Hey, and it ended up costing us uh, $13,000 because they don't exactly make a kit for that thing, and most of that stuff has to be retrofitted for that van. And uh, it took a little extra time to get it ready, but everything works on it. He has a docking station in that thing where when he pulls his chair in, it docks him to that thing. And that way, if something happens, and, and, uh, and it hopefully never has a wreck, but if he does, that means his chair don't come flying in on him. And we, uh, I think we had, I don't know where Shelly's at, we had a little over $300 left over. We raised over $31,000, amen. And we wrote the, we wrote the 300 and some dollar change, uh, and some change check back to Larry and gave him that to buy him some fuel with. Hey, can I, can I tell you this? The brother went. The brother went, Trent went to uh, get it tagged, $18,000, do the math. 
eighteen hundred bucks to tag it. Is that right? Is that pretty close. Eighteen hundred dollars to tag it, and uh, he gets there and he said, I, "I need to tag this for my brother, the man behind the counter, is a dear friend of mine, dear friend of mine." He starts shaking his head, no. He said, you, you can't. He said, yeah. he said, I have to tag the van. It's my brother's van. We've got to get it tagged for him. He said, I, I can't. And the man reached in his back pocket and started counting out money to pay that man, to pay the taxes on that thing and bought his tags for him at the tag place for Brother Larry. Can you give God a good praise for that? Thank God, man. He's faithful. Look at your neighbor and say, God's faithful. Amen. We was raising money, and I appreciate all you did. We was raising, and, and a lot, you got to watch preachers. I mean, I, I'm not one of them, but when they start raising money and say, I can't tell you what it's for, and I did that, and you trusted me, and right there's what we did with the money, amen, and every dime of it, even the leftover, went right into Brother Larry, amen. I think we ought to give God one more big praise for what he did for Brother Larry, amen. Praise God, amen. I'd never take up an offering for myself, but I would hit you up for somebody that needs it. Amen. Isaiah 43 and 2, if you're there, say amen. Anybody love Jesus besides me? Wow, man. A, he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I, I might show up. Maybe. No. He said, I'll be in the midst. He said, if any two of you agree, be agreed as touching anything on earth, it'll be done in heaven. Come on, somebody. We've got to come in agreement. Can I just tell you this? As your pastor standing right here, I want you to understand that the enemy, spiritual wickedness in high places, has tried to set itself up against this service, this morning, this move of God, this word of God. He's trying to mess up your mind and make you think about whatever it is we're thinking about this morning. Amen. I think that we have an overdose on, on social media and news. Amen. And I think when we come in, we can't receive because there's so many voices that have been speaking into our spirits and our hearts and our mind all week. And we listen to that and we conform our minds to it then we're transformed into those things and I want you to understand today I come to do battle with the enemy amen I come back I come to push back the forces of hell off your life to pull you into the presence of a living God that'll set you free amen I come to call upon that lovely name that name that is above every name that at that name every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess amen I want you to understand today amen that depression has to come and bow the knee this morning in this service to the name of Jesus Help me, somebody. I ain't got to my message yet. I got to get you out of the out of the blues. Amen. I want you to understand this morning that Fox and CNN have to come and bow their knee. Amen. To the name of Jesus. Help me. COVID. COVID ain't nothing for the Lord. Help me, somebody. God that spoke this world into existence is the God that'll protect. The God that'll see you through. Somebody give him praise just for a minute. We gotta have more faith than that. Amen. We got to come in. Hey, listen, you can't come in here, walk in this place, and, and just let the devil jump on your back and beat you down and let you leave out here just like you came. I come to beat the devil off of you. Amen. Not to beat the devil out of you. I come to beat him off of you. Amen. So that you can have joy. So you can be the blessed of the Lord. Amen. So exceedingly, abundantly above can be in your life. Amen. So that when the world meets you, they'll see Christ in you and ask of the hope that lies down on the inside of you. And we can reach a lost and dying world for the cross, for the cross of Calvary and the cause of Christ. Ooh, don't stir. Don't, don't act me on. I don't want to read my text. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. We could, I'm not to do any dis, despite to the scriptures or change anything. I'm not adding to it, taking away. Just put COVID in it. When, when you pass through the COVID, when you pass through the cancer, when you, when, when you pass through the bankruptcy, when you pass through the divorce, help me just a little bit. If you just give me a Presbyterian nod, I'll finish that. Just nod at me. Like, just like you concur with me and you understand what I'm trying to say to you this morning. He said, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle 
upon his chin. Father, we love and bless the name of the Lord. So thankful to be in the house of God today, knowing that we serve a risen Savior today, knowing that you've defeated death, hell, and the grave, knowing that there's nothing impossible with you, and knowing that you and us, we will survive the tests and trials of life, that we will get through these things, and we will get through it with the joy of the Lord being our strength and faith in Christ. Somebody give God a praise if you believe that right. In Jesus' name, amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. While you're being seated, look at your neighbor and say, hey, uh, newsflash. Say it with newsflash. Oh, y'all, ain't, y'all watch too much news. Y'all don't want to hear about the news. Newsflash. We're having church tonight at 6 o'clock. And Jesus is going to show up. People are going to be touched. People are going to be delivered. Just like this morning, people are going to be touched. They're going to be delivered. The Spirit of God is coming in this place. And if you can get the enemy, amen, out of your lap this morning, and you get off of your mind the things that the enemy is trying to put in your mind, he's yelling. I can see him in the Spirit. He's screaming in some of y'all's ear. Don't listen. Think about what I'm trying to tell you. And I'm trying to tell you, don't think like he wants you to think. Think like I'm telling you, that you're going to make it through this thing. You're going to be all right. Amen. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. I don't know about you, but I want to finish this race strong. Amen. I don't want to be weak and anemic. I, I, yeah, my worst fear, if you look at me, I'm not a little fellow. My, my worst fear is this, that one day, amen, that one day I'll be sitting in a chair somewhere with a, with a depends on, and y'all coming to see me in the, I don't want to do, I don't want to start a revival over uh, down in the, in the nursing home. I will if the Lord sends me there, but that's not what I want to do. Amen. I don't want to be weak and anemic. I want to be strong all the days of my life. Moses finished his course with joy. Amen. The Bible said his natural strength. Abated him not, amen, and he made it all the way to the end, and I believe, amen, that you and I, if we get the right mindset, can make it through any trial, any test that would come our way, amen. You got to understand this. If you let the enemy, he'll talk to your mind, he'll talk you out of your joy, he'll talk you out of your victory, he'll talk you out of your salvation, he'll talk you out of your life, amen. John 10 and 10 said, the thief has come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We don't want to read the rest of it, but Jesus said, but I got another plan for your life. He said, my plan for you is that you have life. Amen. In him was life and the life was the light of me. And he said, I come that you might have life and have life more abundant. I want you to know that I don't want anything less than what he said I can have. Do you ever have problems, preacher? Every day of the world. But I know the problem solver. I know who brought me in and faithful is he that has called us. Faithful is he that brought us out of the miry clay and set our feet upon a rock. Amen. He's the one that called us out. He began this thing. He will be the one that finishes it at the end. One day after a while, we won't have to fight. But as long as we in this world, we might as well gird up the loins of our mind and get ready to fight. Anybody with me this morning? Hallelujah. Always remember this. You may be impressive for what you start, but you'll be remembered for what you finished. Amen. There's a lot of the, one of our former state overseers came here and he walked in and he looked around and he said, My God, he said, he said, I'll say this for you people. He didn't say this about me, he said, for the people. He said, I'll say this for you people. He said, Y'all don't give up or easy, do you? He said, when you start something, you finish it. He said, There's so many people that won't see nothing through anymore. He said, they'll start working on this or that and they never finish. But I want you to understand with the good help of God, amen, me and you, we will finish this course one day after a while. Can I tell you this? I know. I see the headlines everywhere. They're telling you. You know, they used to tell news and tell you what was going on. Now they tell you how you ought to feel about what's going on. I come by to tell you this. I'm not listening to what they got to say. Amen. Because it all leads down the road of destruction, despair, and doom and depression. I want you to know I know what the Word of God said. It said when you see all these things happening, He said look up for your redemption draw nigh. I come by to tell you I might get rain up my nose but I'm going to be looking up and I'm looking toward the east for soon and very soon we shall see the king. Somebody give him praise. My Lord. Amen brother. Did you see him? He gives this right. He, went. he gets that from John Shelton. I know. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you, amen, that over 25, 26 years coming to this church, I've seen many people come and go who were not willing to pay the price. I've seen people come in that was going to do great things for God, and they went by the wayside because of an offense. I mean, I've seen people come in that stayed a little while, worked a little while, and was gone because of an offense, because the devil suggested something to them, and they bought into it. Do you know how powerful our media is, how powerful the television is? Back in the old days, old preachers preached against Lucy. Amen. I got news for you, Lucy and Ricky slept in separate beds. I don't know how we ever got a little Ricky in the mix, sir. Amen. And, 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 and preached against gun smoke. They'd say things like this. They'd say their hearts is full of Lucy and the house is full of gun smoke. And I won't let you out of here so you can go home in time to watch gun. I'm going to preach the gun smoke. Goes off. I've heard that all my life. I want you to understand they would be appalled at what's on television now. Amen. I would to God they'd watch I Love Lucy. I would to God they'd watch gun smoke. My God. Amen. And the devil is bidding for for the minds of the people of America to keep us distracted. Amen. And God is sending a word to the church and he's saying, stay focused. The time is at hand. It's time to be about the Father's business. It's not time to be depressed and in doom and despair, but it's a time to lift up our heads and be the people that God called us to be, full of joy, full of love, full of the Holy Ghost. Woo! My Lord. Poor Sister Buffy at. I'm preaching first tonight, okay? And that way they'll shout the house down. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think we ought to give them guys and girls a big hand. They work relentless. And they come in and and uh, and they're singing and worshiping. And some of y'all sitting back there singing, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. They're gonna, she going to sing that tonight. She'll fix you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want you to understand that we're living in the last days, and we know we're living in the last days. And I'm trying to prepare you, amen, to survive some things that's coming upon me. The earth. If you look and you'll realize with me, amen, if you'll if you realize with me, there's spirits that's being unleashed. I heard a man say this on television this morning. I had a dear friend of his that was living that moved to another place or was there for a few weeks in another place for business. And it was a place that was known for perversion. And he said he got there and he said he never had thoughts that run across his mind. And the enemy began to speak to his mind. And he said, I wrestled and fought with things I never wrestled and fought with before in my life. And he said, and when I got out of there the warfare left and, and what it was is it was evil spirits had set themselves up in that city can I tell you for about 25 30 years maybe longer they've been conditioning this world and the minds of the young people amen for this time that we're living in they have they have tried to tell us that wrong was right and right was wrong They've tried to tell us, amen, they, they, they've tried to tell us what the Bible said was wrong is right. Now, I want you to understand with me, there's a spirit of perversion. You wonder why so many young people turn into homosexuality, and I don't care if I get photo off Facebook Live. You wonder why? It's because it's propagated on every channel. It's propagated on every social media outlet. It's proposed to be that it's normal, and if you don't, first, we just want to be tolerated. We know it's wrong. We just want to be tolerated and them that sought to be tolerated became the most intolerable bunch in the whole world and I come to tell you today that right is still right and God's word is right and God's word is true and wrong is still wrong this morning and we're on the right side Woo help me now Jesus I done made some of them mad <laughs> Woo first Timothy 4 and 1 now the spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times you know here's can I slow down just a minute just for a minute it won't last long I promise but uh, but we live in a society today that there is a huge wall built that you can't reach them for the cause of Christ because of hyper Calvinism you know what that is you can't talk to them in this hour 
about eschatology, about the end of all things. You can't warn them that the Lord is about to come and he's going to sever the righteous from the wicked. You can't tell them that because they bought into hyper-Calvinism, which says pray a little prayer, sign the card, baptize, join the church, and I got my get-out-of-hell-free card, and you can't take it away from me. Amen. I, I, I seen a little video of a, of a lady on, 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 on uh, YouTube, and, and she was crying, and she was, uh, and I thought, man, this is going to be good, and she's going to say something really good for Christianity. And, and she was saying, and they got us locked out of our church. And they, won't, and they won't let us worship, and we can't assemble when we do. We can't. And then all at once, all the vulgarities and profanities started coming out of her mouth. And I thought, dear child, you don't even know the one that I know. Amen. The one that I know came in and made old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. He cleaned up my filthy mouth. Come on, somebody. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly in the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to some seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Listen, please just pardon me while I get on a soapbox just one minute. And you don't have to agree with me. You, can, you don't run out of here and say, well, that whole church is like it. This is my opinion. This ain't coming from the Word of God. But I want you to know they have absolutely kicked God out of our schools. They don't want no Bibles. They don't want no prayer. And one of our candidates stands up and he says, if I think it'd be good to put Muslims curriculum he says he's a Christian he's a liar if he says that I want you to understand we will not vote for somebody that wants to kick God out and put Allah in no sir no way that's doctrines of devils seducing spirits that are causing people to leave the faith help me I don't care about Democrats or Republicans I don't care about what the word of God said why did we get so polarized that bless God we can't vote for one because we was born this way why? I voted both sides. And if you stand on one side or the other and say, I will never support the other one, you're going to get mud on your face after a while. You need to think about that this year. We are literally in the throes of spiritual warfare in our country. We are literally, the, the spiritual wickedness in high places has made itself known. And they're saying, we will not have any rest in our cities until we get our way. I want you to understand. When I grew up, it didn't work like that. Amen. And you know what? It didn't work like that up in Marstown. They started throwing bottles at cops. You know what they did? They arrested two or three, and the rest of them left. Said, we ain't going to try that no more. It's time, amen, for us to take a stand. The Spirit's speaking to us. A lot of people are leaving the faith. You know why they leave? Can I tell you why they leave? There's no Spirit in them. Amen. There's no Spirit in our churches anymore. We've gone through we've gone through the religious niceness in the church and we've come in and we've not had no spirit and Jesus show up and we just barred him he's not allowed to move anymore but I come by to tell you for those where the spirit of God is allowed to move God will show himself for you God still saves he still sanctifies he still baptizes in the Holy Ghost and fire he's still healing and delivering and setting the captives free he's still open blinded eyes He's still moving. Amen. A lot of people departing. A lot of mainline denominational leaders standing up and embracing alternative lifestyles. I'm going to leave that right there and just set it down there. You just think of what I just said right there. How in the world can you embrace anything that goes against the Word of God? If that ain't the truth, then let's go to the house and go fishing. But if it is the truth, let's live by it to the best of our ability. Let's call on the God that still saves. Let's move in the spirit, amen, and win the loss at any cost. And i got to get into the rest of my message. Y'all got me sidetracked. 27. I want to talk to you just a little bit about passing through the water and through the rivers. Acts 27, very familiar story. The problem with familiar stories and familiar uh, passages is you think that you know that you already heard all this and you already know all about all this but maybe not watch this acts 27 paul finds himself in a place amen that the winds is blowing contrary 
to him. He finds him placed in the, wor in the worst storm of his whole life. Amen. He finds himself in a place that he didn't want to be to begin with, but now he's already in. And he can't, we didn't want to go through COVID, but we're in it. Now we got to find a way to survive it. Amen. He found himself as a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon in verse 14. Amen. Begins to blow against that, against that mighty ship that he's in. Amen. And, and he told them later on, he said, I told you so later on. But I want you to understand storms are a part of life. It's time. We can't. Do you know how many people they say how, how much the, the suicide rate has went up? People taking their own life because they don't feel no hope. You won't get no hope out of Fox. You won't get no hope out of MSNBC and CNN. You won't get no hope, amen, off of the, uh, most of the time, uh, off of Facebook. But if you want hope, you got to get in the book, amen. You got to read the stories of the patriarchs and the matriarchs of old that survived testings, amen, that went through cruel, cruel markings, that, uh, that went through scourgings and went through uh, being crucified upside down. You've got to get in the book and understand that a storm is a part of life, amen. I, I never will forget, we, we, was on a, we was on a cruise ship one time. You ever been on one? Oh, my wife really likes them. I'm glad she does. <laughs> I don't like them sometimes. I, I, don't, I don't like them. And we was out there, and let me tell you what they do. They got all this Doppler stuff, and they got them things up on the top, and they're spinning. And, 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 and we're watching all you can get on there is CNN. They, they don't believe in nothing else. That's all they got on there. Amen. So we're watching the news on CNN, and we, and, and we look, and we see this huge, this, this huge storm that's coming, right, and we headed right for it. Amen. And I felt somewhere in the night, I felt that thing begin to turn. I, I, you could tell it was turning. And it moved, and it, and it drove around the storm. I told my wife, I said, them people on that island, I said, they're used to storms. I said, the storm of life will come through. It'll blow everything down. I said, in 24 Four hours, they put it back up, got the power on, standing there hollering, cheaper for you. Come over here, buy my stuff. They do it every time, amen. Somewhere in this thing as a Christian, you've got to understand that storms are going to come. Sometimes you can navigate around them. Sometimes you got to go out in the midst of them. Do you know what the Navy does and a, a lot of places that have bigger ships? You know what they do? They take their ships out into deep water and they anchor them for the storms of life. Amen. Can I tell you, if you can't hang around the bank in a storm, you'll get beat to death. It's time to go deep into the Word of God and be anchored and ready to fight the storm that's coming. I can't get no help in here. Hey Amen. Your rock, LaDon Dake said it was a typhoon, whirlwind, or a hurricane blowing in all directions. Sometimes life, in life, you got to weather through the big storm. Hey Amen. You got to be like Fred Sanford. You got to say, man, this is the big one, Elizabeth. Hey Amen. Our last, our, uh, uh, one of the last days that we had on one of the ships, we had 45 or 44 miles per hour crosswinds from a tropical depression. Hey Amen. Tables were sliding across the thing. I was laying in the bed, and the bed jumped out from under me in the middle of the night. And I'm, I'm a big old boy. And when I come down and the bed come up, it was a terrible wreck right there, and nobody even moved. I mean, boom. I thought, I thought Norman slipped in there and hit me with a bat in the side of the head. I didn't know what happened. The ship went down. I went up. I come down. The ship come up. It was terrible. It was a bad wreck. Amen. You know something? Sometimes in life, you it's unavoidable. It's going to be a bad wreck. Amen. 28 or 27, 18 said, and we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest the next day, lighting the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Can I tell somebody that's in the storm right now? That I want you to understand this storm will bring a priority to your life for what is really important. Amen. You, you, you know something when, when when we went through uh of the market crash and all that 2008 I don't know how those people selling RVs boats and motorcycles made it you know why because nobody was buying motorcycles nobody was buying RVs amen nobody nobody was buying anything extracurricular activities was out the window they forgot about it can I tell somebody that's in the storm sometimes God allows you to go through the storms of life to show you what 
is exactly in your life that you need and what you don't. We can make it on a whole lot less. I welcome the challenge of the storm, for I know the sea walker. I know the one that can say, peace be still. And until it does, I'm going to ride out the storm today. I believe the Baptist would have said amen to that one. I run off and left my sweat rack somewhere. Amen. Friend, it's time to lighten the ship. The Bible said, for me and you to less weight and sin. It does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience. The race that is set. We, we are in an instant gratification uh, generation. Amen. We Pentecostals, we are instant gratification. Lay hands on me, pray. Lay, lay hands on me and let me be healed. I know it works like that sometimes. Sometimes it don't. Amen. Sometimes you gotta have patience, and sometimes you gotta go on when you don't feel like it. And sometimes you got you gotta you gotta serve the Lord. Amen. When things are going wrong, thank you, baby boy. Train up a child in the way he should go. Man, I'm gonna be watching you on Facebook Live from the nursing home one of these days, buddy. Praise the Lord. Sad thing is, he won't get much taller than that. <laughs> Did you see his grandmother? <laughs> oh, no, that's his aunt, right? No, that's his grandmother. That's his mother. That's his mom. I'm sorry. That's his mom. I apologize. Please don't be mad at me. I've got one done backslid on me now. I've got to give an altar call. We'll <laughs> I love them. They're my family. I'm teasing them. Amen. <laughs> it's time, though, to lighten the ship. It's time to take a priority list in your life and say, I can live with this and I can't live without this. It's some things that you got to figure out in your life, amen, as the storms begins to hit, amen. You know something, we, we really do get out of sorts sometimes. Churches will get out of sorts sometimes, and God comes in and begins to prune and cut things back, and it don't look too good for a while, but then all at once it begins to grow again, and it begins to get strong again, and God is doing a pruning in the body of Christ. If you've lost some things and you're upset about it, I want you to understand the most important thing in your life is not the things that you had. It's not a house or a, a car or a truck or a bike or a boat it's none of those things amen the most important thing in your life is your relationship with Jesus Christ hold on to him in the storm when you pass through the waters and when you go through the rivers they won't overflow you if you understand that the greatest thing that I possess today is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ all these other things don't matter anymore if you believe that give God a good praise Paul said, Paul said in Philippians 3, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, a refuge, that I may win Christ. Now watch this, verse 20. And when sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, and all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Paul was saying we lost hope. That, that's what this message is today. I don't want you to I don't want you to lose hope. I told this joke in Sunday school. Some didn't get it. Maybe you will. I got a, uh, I got a COVID joke. You want to hear it? You wouldn't get it no way. Thank you. 99.60% <laughs> percent do not get it anyway. Look at you there. Amen. Paul said, I'm in a hopeless situation. I want you to understand that I think it's real. I, th I, I had a dear friend of mine, two pastors. One of them was a really close friend of mine, one I knew of, passed away with it. I was in the same meeting that they got it in. I didn't get it. Amen. Thanks be unto God for protecting me. But I want you to understand we're never without hope in this world. And you turn on the news and that's all you hear. There is no news besides it. What are we going to talk about, talk about November 4th? I want to know. Amen. I am so over it. I can't stand it. You know what? It is a bad situation. We ought to protect protect ourselves. We ought to wear masks. We ought to take care of one another. Be considerate of other people. Amen. And if you're afraid you'll catch it from me, you don't have no faith in your mask is all I know. I 
I'm, try, I'm not trying to belittle the thing. I'm trying to give you faith to make you understand that the fire will not burn you, neither will it kindle upon you. I'm trying to make you understand that you can't threaten a Christian with heaven. I want you to understand, I see so many people that are running around and they have no hope. And you know what? It's over something that's not as bad as the flu. I don't know why we ain't shut the whole world down over the flu. I'd like to know why we've not. Amen. I think I know why we've not. But that's another story at another time. The problem that Paul had was he hadn't seen no daylight. He hadn't seen no stars in many days. And no small tempest lay upon him. And all hope that they should be saved was taken away. And you know what the enemy does? He works through the media and social media. And he tells you there is no hope. It'll never be the same again. We have to accept the new normal. This thing will probably last all the way to 2024. I want you to understand something. If it does, it does. But you and I have a hope in glory. This place is not our home. We are just passing through. Jesus is still on the throne, alive and well and in control of the covenant. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to have hope against hope. Help us, Lord, to believe in the dark time. It, listen, evil men are waxing worse and worse and running for office. Amen. I said this in Sunday school. I'm going to get in trouble. Pray for me. I said, in the hog pen, I said, the hogs is always going to vote for the one giving them the slop. And they don't know he's the one going to kill them later. That's socialism defined. Come on, we don't need it. We don't need it. One of our leaders stood up and said we should surrender our rights to a, a divine sovereign that, because we're not smart enough and intelligent enough to govern our own affairs and we need somebody. I said, fooey on you. Amen. I want you to understand I don't need to look to a man to tell me how I need to live. I need to look to the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and Christ our King. I'm not voting for a president. I'm looking for a king. Amen. I don't Listen, whoever's in the White House has little to do. Amen. They can do so much, but I want you to understand Understand? The one that sits on the throne is the one that's in control, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Somebody bless him. Somebody believes that ought to give God a praise this morning. You are not without hope. Amen. Man. Verse 21. I love verse 21. He said, but long after, but after long abstinence, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Crete to have gained this harm and loss. Paul, what Paul does in the, midst, in the storm, he steals away. You know what we've got to do during this time? Steal away. You know what we got to do during this time? We've got to. How many was here the Thursday night of uh, of the camp meeting? Was you here? Uh, I want to go on record as uh, I like Teresa Harwood. She's my friend, and sometimes she scares me. I'm telling you the God's truth, and I'll tell you for why. She don't have no filter when it comes to God. Can I tell you that's not a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing when you're the pastor and she don't have no filter and she calls you up. And she went like this right here. And she was right. She said, I see you in the throes. Back and forth. Back and forth. And she said, and you're asking God, God, what's going on? God, I don't understand this. God, what's happening in my life? Why am I being hit from every side? And she said, iron sharpening iron. And she said, God is only sharpening you for the next move of God that is to come in this world. And I want you to understand, if you're going to sharpen yourself in the spirit, you must throw yourself into prayer, calling upon the God 
that can deliver. Knowing that in the midst of the storm, you ignore the storm. He ignored the storm, and he threw himself into prayer, and he found himself a place that he could get alone with God. Can I tell you, to live is Christ, and to die is gain anyway. Amen. And if I, and I, after all this, we're going to go to heaven one day. Watch what he does. He hides for a long time and he prays. A lot of people have uh, a, a lot of people have almost survived and didn't make it because the storm was so great and they lost hope of being saved and they didn't pray. Now watch what he says, and I'm about to close. He said, verse 22. And now I exhort you. Be a good cheer. You know what I've been trying to do since I took this mic? I've been trying to exhort you to have faith in God and be a good chair. Cheaper. In the South, a chair or something said on there. Good, be of good cheer. It said, what, what, what's what it said? It said, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as was told me. Hey, can I, can I tell you this? Can I tell you what I heard in the Spirit? heart in this room this one on Facebook it's in here it said how am I going to feed my baby when groceries keep going higher and higher the world economy we become a one world we're separated but we're all in this thing together now I heard a mother's heart say how am I going to leave this world one day and leave my babies in this mess we're in heard a daddy's heart say, what if I lose my job? How am I going to feed my children? How am I going to take care of my wife? I heard somebody's heart say, if this doctor's report is what I think it's going to be, I won't be here much longer. Paul, in the darkest time, stood up and he said, sirs, be of good cheer. He said, for an angel of God stood before me, the God I serve. And he said, he said, God ain't never lost a battle. I should have called it. I should have, if I'm a survivor, I should have called it, God has never lost a battle. Sir, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. What, what, what's, what's this? Paul had 100% participation. Everybody was going to make it. I would to God that I had 100%. I would that everybody that's sitting under the sound of my voice in this building, not counting them on Facebook, would make it. And you know what? You can make it. You got to make up your mind. You ain't going to let this storm overtake you. You got to make up your mind. Verse 31, standing all over the building. Paul said to the centurion, to the soldiers, he's talking to over a hundred men. You know what he said? He said, Except these and abide in the ship. he said he said in the middle of a storm it's not the time to jump ship on God he said if you leave the ship now you won't be saved what are you saying preacher I'm saying we're so close to the end you better not get out now you better not now the spirit speaking expressly latter times some shall depart from the faith 
giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's where we're at right now. Paul said, except these abide. Abide means I'm here. I, I, I come in with my hooks up and my hang up and my mess up, but I'm here. I come when I feel like it and I come when I don't. I come when I've done real good and I come when I ain't done so good. Except these abide in the shelter in this dark time. Can I tell you, this might be the last. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you, this might be the last battle before we leave out of this place. And I wouldn't miss eternity for nothing in this world. I don't want to be in this dark time without the Lord. I don't know about you. Bow your heads with me. Prayer walkers is coming and altars is open for those this morning that have been fighting depression. I call out depression because I felt it when I came in this place. I call out hopelessness because I felt it when I shook some of your hands. I call out despair because I felt despair in the people of God this morning. I'm opening the altar for you that you can come today and say, Lord, I'm going to ride this storm out. Lord, I've got hope today that's beyond this dark time. Would you come? The altars of God are open. Would you come and bring that hopelessness and lay it down and get hope? Would you come and bring that depression and put it on this altar? That's a spirit, sir. That's a spirit, ma'am. Would you come and lay it on the altar and say, God, I'm staying with the ship. Come on, I know you're here. Come on. Please don't be bashful. Just come on. Listen, I know you can pray on your way to the car or in the car or in when you get home. But you got to understand right now is the time that God is moving in your life. He may not be moving when you get home. And you don't need to carry that stuff home with you. You need to lay it on the altars. Get up with the joy of the Lord being your strength. Would you come? Come on. Come on. The Lord's waiting on you. He loves you. He knew this storm was coming. He knew it was coming. He's going to help you. Some of your brothers come right over here. Hurry. Help our brother pray. Will you? Come on, there's others. Come on. Now you ain't got to be the first. Come on. Step out of your seat and come down here and say, Lord, I'm not. I'm not getting out of the ship in this storm. I'm going to hold on to you in this hopeless time. I'm never going to give up. I'm never going to quit. Come on, come on, some of your brothers right here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. hurry. Come, on. come on, bring it to the Lord, children. Come on. Come on, children. Come on. Come on, hurry. My by 
the washed by the blood. How many of you are so thankful that no matter what you're here this morning, the devil may have took out a, a death order on you, but God said, no, I'm not finished with you yet. There's a reason why you're still here. So if you don't know what that purpose is, I suggest that you begin to seek his face and find out what that purpose is because he has a purpose. None of us are a mistake. We may have been a surprise to our parents, but none of us are a mistake. So just remember that. Don't forget, we have service tonight at 6 o'clock. We get to do this all over again. We get, to, we get to praise the Lord even more. Don't just, don't wait till you get here. Go, do it before you come to church. Bring that with you to church and let God lead and guide you. Remember service 6 o'clock. Tell someone about it. Bring somebody with you. And tell somebody you love them. I'm going to tell you something. The best way to tell somebody you love them is to show them God's love. Sometimes you don't even have to open your mouth and tell them that you are a Pentecostal, that you're church of God. All you got to do is just show them that love. I was in a home here recently, and, and, and they, it, I can't go into all details, but it, it was a very a godly home. And all I did was went in and felt I was myself. Showed them the love. Showed them that Della loved them, and she meant it. Before the visit was over, they said, where do you go to church at? And I told them where I went to church at because I'm very proud to be a Mount Valian. How many of you all are very glad to be a Mount Valian? We are so glad that we are Mount Valians. God has put us together for a reason and for this time in our life. I'll never forget the first time I was called a Mount Valian. I had just had our youngest son, was in the hospital recovering, and they said, you must, you must be a Mount Valian. I said, well, yeah, I go to Mount Vale, so let me tell you. People are watching us. They watch us on Facebook. They watch us on YouTube, Twitter, the, the, the uh, website, wherever. But people are watching us to see how we handle things. So remember that. Because you don't want to know what to say, well, you've done something. you done this or you done that. Just remember, I love you. God loves you more. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We worship you, God. 
for allowing us to be here this morning. We thank you, God, for uh, waking us up this morning, God. We thank you, God, sometimes even though our backs and our necks and our bodies are stiff, that we are still able to come into the house of the Lord, Father. God, we thank you, God, for shielding us from everything that's going on in this world, God. And some of us have been touched by this virus, God, but we thank you, God, for bringing us through it, God. Because your word says if you bring us to it, you will bring us through it. You didn't leave us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. In every situation that we go through in life, God, bring us back tonight at your point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.